Hey, how's it going? It's me, Noor, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I thought I would showcase my entire physical TBR. Um, I've mentioned a bunch of these books before, but here they are collectively. Some of these I haven't mentioned, and yeah, I would like to know if any of you have ever read these books, like what your review was, what you suggest, just because where do I begin, right? Um, also, I'm like in a different location. Sorry if my bed like creaks awkwardly. Ugh. To start, um, this is my collection of Zadie Smiths, of which I have read none. I started reading on beauty, got that far in, and this is about love, the mistakes we make with our children and what makes life truly beautiful. So it's set between London and New England. Um, it follows a pair of feuding families. And yeah, sounds interesting, but I couldn't really get into the writing style when I started. Um, and I really want to read Zadie Smith. I feel like she's like a staple of a certain literary community um, that I very much aspire to be a part of. I feel like if you're like cool, you read Zadie Smith. I want to be cool um, but yeah I can't get into the writing style and I think like if I were to find like an entryway in with one book the others would become more accessible I don't know so this is White Teeth this is her debut novel again this follows like feuding families it's apparently very funny um, dealing among many other things with friendship love war three cultures three families over three generations one mouse and the tricky way the past has of coming back and biting you in the ankle it is a life-affirming riotous must read of a book must read of a book i must um then there is swing time by zadie smith this is Again, set in London, New York, and West Africa, two brown girls from Williston who dream of being dancers. Only one has the talent, but the other has ideas which take her further than she could have ever imagined. That sounds really fun, actually. I think this might be a more accessible one for me to start with, but... So, Shylock is my name. A weird book. I got this because I believe this has to do with an art collector so it says with an absent wife and daughter uh, with an absent wife and a daughter going off the rails wealthy art collector and philanthropist Simon Strulovich is in need of someone to talk to so when he meets Shylock at a cemetery in Cheshire's Golden Triangle he invites him back to his house it's the begin it is the beginning of a remarkable friendship so this sounds interesting I'm very interested in reading more books that center around characters that engage in the art world just because like that's like something I want to do not necessarily as an art collector but I'm very interested in art history curating all of that so interested to see like how these characters are developed and the world that they're situated in the namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri I love Jhumpa Lahiri um, this is again a story of migration it follows the Ganguly family as they move to Boston? Maybe? Somewhere in America. I want to say Boston, but I'm probably incorrect. Uh, so again, story of migration, story of families, the experience of being first generation and how sort of the priorities and the cultural values maybe shift. Then Pachinko. I know everyone says this is fabulous. I really want to read it. I read a bit of it, read up until page 32, featuring this very beautiful postcard that my best friend sent me, because um, it matches, but yeah, I don't know. I'm very intimidated by a 500 page book. I know it's fantastic. I know it talks about the effects of Japanese imperialism, which again, I'm interested in, but it's 500 pages. <laughs> Um, okay. Sleeping on Jupiter by Anuradha Roy. I mentioned this in a reading vlog when I got it from the bookstore. Um, this won the Man Booker in 2015, or was nominated for the Man Booker in 2015. 
Um, it follows these three old women that make a pilgrimage to this town and meet a young girl there. They form an unlikely friendship, all of that. And apparently very dark, a dark past emerges is what it says. So that's Sleeping on Jupiter. Your House Will Pay by Steph Cha. Um, I believe this is based on a real story. It's set in Los Angeles. It talks about how this black family and this family of Korean immigrants become connected through a crime that occurs, um, maybe a fire, I wanna say. And it talks about, I guess, racial dynamics within Los Angeles, probably. Am I wrong? <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Next, there's this weird book that I have no idea how I got, but it's called Wildcat Falling by Mudruru, and it is about an aboriginal youth of Baji of the early 60s who grows up on the ragged outskirts of a country town, falls into petty crime, goes to Goal, Gaul, and comes out to do battle once more with society that put him there. Its publication in 1965 marked a unique literary event for it was the first novel by any writer of Aboriginal blood to be published in Australia. So very cool. I'm very interested in reading this and it's a little slim volume. So quick read might be something I read this month, actually. Um, the Time Machine by H.J. Wells, again, a classic work of speculative fiction that I've never read. I really want to read and again, very, very slim, so might get into it. The Time Machine is a firsthand account of a time traveler's journey into the future. A pull of the lever and the machine sends him into the year, numbers are hard to read, 18, nope, 800, 2000, 802,701, maybe? Anyway, future, where humanity has split into two bizarre races, the ethereal Elwa and the subterranean Murlocs. Interesting. Then there is this collection of short stories that I have gotten this far into. <laughs> um, it's called Constancia and Other Stories for Virgins by Carlos Fuentes. I really want to read this. This cover is stunning, obviously. And yeah, it's magical surrealist. The first story I was reading, I was enjoying, but I think I started reading it maybe a little bit earlier into getting back into reading. So I don't think I had the same um, stamina or what is it like endurance in reading? like. When something was tough, it was a lot easier to put it down as opposed to just like work through it. So I would be interested in rereading this, again, like stunning book, right? That's something I really miss about being able to go to secondhand bookstores is just finding random books that maybe no one has heard of or maybe people have heard of, but I've never heard of um, and just buying them solely on the very shallow reason that the cover is gorgeous. Um, or they sound cool and not having my reading taste so much be influenced by what is popular which I definitely do think is the case nowadays like I read books that of course like I've heard people say wonderful things about and like I'm grateful to read those books but I do miss like I do miss being edgy and different and unique <laughs> um, but also just the joy of finding something that no one has read and is like wait let me talk about this let other people know what's up so definitely want to read this this is the collector's chukthai it is a collection of isma chukthai's short stories um can't really summarize because it is a collection of short stories but chukthai is like one of the most prominent urdu writers and there is a story in here called lehaf the quilt that is a sapphic story so i'm very interested in reading that of course um and i heard sheila from meta narrator talk about this book and fantastic she's very big brain very intelligent so any book she recommends i put down on my tbr immediately 
Uh, the next stack of books are ones I recently procured. I have Elena Ferrante's The Story of a New Name. I've read the first book in the Neapolitan series and it's summertime, it's you know the perfect season to read the second story or the second installment in the story. Um, so now this follows Elena and Leila in their 20s. Elena continues her journey of self-discovery while marriage appears to have imprisoned Leila. The two young women share a complex and evolving bond that brings them together at times and drives them apart at others, each of them vacillating between hurtful disregard and profound love. Um, also in the first book, it opens with Leila having gone missing, so I'm very interested to see like how, how it gets to that point, like where does she go, right? Um, so I'm excited to get through this series and just also Ferrante's writing is so luxurious it's so beautiful I wish I was reading this on a beach instead of like in my room but what can you do then I got some books that are on the booker long list because I want to you know make my way through some of them um, I have no one is talking about this Patricia Lockwood apparently a book about the internet um, so on the back it says, reading Patricia Lockwood feels like looking through a kaleidoscope built by a mischievous sorcerer. Suddenly the, the world is suddenly rearranged in fragments that are cosmic, wondrous, humiliating, and profane. Um, oh, Gia Tolentino said that. Love her. So no idea what this is about other than the internet, but very excited to read this. Also love the cover. Very cute, I guess. <laughs> Second Place by Rachel Cusk. Again, one of those books that I really want to read because it has to do with like the idea of the art world, artist residencies. I would love to like run an artist residency at some point in my life. That would be exciting. Or even do like a writing residency. Maybe one day. It'll happen, it'll happen. Um, but yes, this is about a woman that turns their second place like a second home into an artist residency and invites these artists that she likes and looks up to admires their work and then i believe gets frustrated at the fact that she isn't an artist muse um that is what i understand from hearing other people talk about this but yeah and the final book that i'm reading with my company book club is a passage north by anuk Arud Prajasam, I believe is how you say his name, um, and it follows this man that travels from Colombo in Sri Lanka to Delhi because his grandmother's caretaker dies. Um, also, there's an activist woman that he's in love with that has disappeared, I think. Um, that is what I'm understanding from the French flap. It talks about Sri Lanka's political history, their independence movement, maybe? No, uh, the legacy of Sri Lanka's 30-year civil war, um, this procession to a pirate at the end of the earth lays the bare imprints of an island's past and the unattainable distances between who we are and what we seek. So it sounds very interesting. I don't know that much about the history of Sri Lanka, so I'm excited to get some insight into it via this book. But yes, that is my entire physical TBR. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know where I should start, um, especially with the Zadie Smiths. Like, I have three that I've read none of, so definitely let me know which one of those is the best, or maybe I should get Grand Union and start there. But yeah, um, let me know. Comment below, leave your thoughts, let's chat, let's be friends, let's hang out all of that um like comment subscribe all the other things you can do on youtube and i will see you soon soon all right goodbye <laughs>